Hi everyone, and welcome to Shavlik Patch for Microsoft System Center. My name is Joe Andert, and I'm a technical communicator with Shavlik. In this video, I will demonstrate how to install and configure Shavlik Patch. So, let's get started. First, let me provide a quick introduction to Shavlik Patch for Microsoft System Center, or Shavlik Patch for short. Shavlik Patch is an add-in to Microsoft's System Center Configuration Manager. Shavlik Patch extends Configuration Manager's capabilities by enabling you to publish updates for third-party products and for legacy Microsoft products that are no longer supported by Configuration Manager. With Shavlik Patch, you leverage a single Configuration Manager workflow for publishing updates for both Microsoft and non-Microsoft products. You can find out more information about Shavlik Patch on our website, www.shavlik.com. Our starting point for this video is Configuration Manager. I'm starting here so that I can show you what the Software Updates folder in Configuration Manager looks like before installing Shavlik Patch. After Shavlik Patch is installed, there will be two additional items in the Software Updates folder. To begin the Shavlik Patch installation, I will close Configuration Manager. The next step is to go to the Downloads page on Shavlik.com and download the Shavlik Patch executable file. For this demonstration, I have already downloaded the file and saved it to the local drive. To begin the install, I will just double-click the file. I should mention that there are a few system requirements that must be met in order to install and use Shavlik Patch on a Configuration Manager 2012 console. There are two requirements in particular that I'd like to call out. The first is that the user running Shavlik Patch must be a member of the WSUS Administrators Group on the WSUS server. The other requirement that I'd like to highlight is for configurations that have WSUS on a remote machine. In this case, the Remote Admin Tools feature must be installed on the remote machine. In addition, the version of the Remote Admin Tools and the version of WSUS must match or you will not be able to deploy updates. There is nothing out of the ordinary about any of the remaining requirements, and you can find the complete list of requirements in the Shavlik Patch User's Guide. The actual installation process is extremely easy. You just follow the on-screen instructions on a couple of standard installation dialogs. With Shavlik Patch now installed, let me restart Configuration Manager so I can show you what has changed. Shavlik Patch will add two new items to the Software Library's Software Updates folder. The Shavlik Patch list item contains all of the updates that are available in the Shavlik Patch catalog. You will use this item to locate and publish updates. Publish third-party updates contains all of the third-party updates that have been published to WSUS. I will talk about both of these items in much more detail in a separate video. The first time you use Shavlik Patch, the Shavlik Patch Settings Wizard will be displayed. For example, the first tab in the wizard is the Welcome tab. This tab provides an overview of the tasks you will need to perform before you can begin using Shavlik Patch. I will be walking you through each of these tasks in this video. One task not covered by this wizard is the distribution of the code signing certificate that you will need to either generate or import. Distribution of the certificate to your client machines and to your Configuration Manager and WSS servers is a separate process and must be performed in order for these machines to receive third-party updates. I'll remind you about this separate process later in this video. The WSUS Server tab is used to configure how the Shavlik Patch add-in will communicate with your WSUS server. It is also used to define the certificate that will be used to digitally sign the content that is published to the WSUS server. The WSUS server information will normally be detected automatically. You can test your ability to access the WSUS server by clicking Test Connection. A code signing certificate is required in order to publish updates to the WSUS server. You can create the certificate using either an internal certificate authority 
or your WSUS server. If you use an internal CA, just follow your normal process for creating the certificate and then use the import button to import the certificate into WSUS. Note that if your WSUS server is remote, importing the certificate requires a secure SSL connection. For this demonstration, I will create the code signing certificate using the WSUS server. Shavlik Patch simplifies this process by providing a Create a Self-Signed Certificate button. Clicking this button will instruct WSUS to create a self-signed code signing certificate for your organization. For example, here you can see that there currently is no certificate in place. But by clicking the Create a Self-Signed Certificate button, the certificate you need is created on the WSUS server and is registered with WSUS. The certificate is also imported to the trusted root and to the trusted publisher's certificate stores on the local configuration manager console. The next step is to export the certificate to an accessible location on your network. This is done using the export button. For example, after exporting the certificate, you will need to distribute it to any other WSUS servers in your organization and to your client machines. This is necessary so that the machines can receive locally published updates. How you choose to distribute the certificate to these machines is up to you. One of the most common methods for distributing a cert is to use group policy. You can refer to the Shavlik Patch User's Guide for information on this and other distribution methods. With my WSUS server settings in place, I am now ready to click Next and configure my proxy settings. The Proxy tab allows you to modify the proxy settings used by Shavlik Patch when accessing the Internet. The first thing you should do is click the Do I Need Proxy Info button. If the test is successful, as is the case here, then nothing further is required and you can simply click OK and then Next. If the test fails, however, it typically means your organization is using a proxy server and you will need to provide the credentials necessary to authenticate to the server. Simply enable the Use Proxy checkbox and then type and test the credentials. Once your proxy information is set, the next step is to license the program. When you first install the program, it will be unlicensed which is the case we have here. To initiate the license process, click Enter License Key. You should have received your license key in an email message from Shavlik. Simply copy that key to your computer's clipboard and then paste it into the License Activation dialog. Make sure that Product License is selected and that you are using the Online Activation method and then click Activate Online Now. It should only take a few seconds to complete the activation process. When it is done, click Close. Your license key information will now be displayed on the License tab. What I just covered is the online activation process, which is what most people will use. But if you do not have an Internet connection and are operating from a secure, disconnected environment, don't worry. You'll just need to use the manual license process. See the user's guide for information on how to manually import your license. With our program now licensed, let's go ahead and click Next to review the Offline Options. The Offline Options tab is used for two related purposes. The Local Source Folder area provides an alternate location to specify software update content and the Offline Mode area supports environments that do not have an Internet connection. Let's take a closer look at these two areas. The Local Source Folder area lets you specify if you want to use a local folder as the source location for updates that you want to publish. Pre-downloading updates to a local folder can greatly speed the publication process. If the Use a local source folder checkbox is enabled. The specify folder will be the first place the program looks for the update binary file. 
If the update is not contained in the local folder, the program will follow the normal publication process and will download the update from the vendor website. The Offline Mode area provides the option to run Shavlik Patch in Offline Mode. If you enable this checkbox, it means the Council will not attempt to download newer catalog files or update files. This mode is typically used by sites that require the use of fixed versions of data that have been pre-approved for use, or by sites whose security policy does not allow the unauthorized download and use of data files. If you operate in offline mode, you will need to manually manage your catalog files and your update binary files. You must download the files from an internet-connected machine and then move the files back to your console machine. A utility is available to help you with the download process. For more information, click the provided link. The Languages tab lets you specify how Shavlik Patch should handle updates that contain different download packages for different languages. This tab controls which language versions will be displayed by Shavlik Patch, as well as which language versions will be published to WSUS. We provide you with three different options. By default, Shavlik Patch will only display update packages for languages that are currently supported by your WSUS configuration. You have the option to choose your own subset of languages or to display packages for all languages. And, at first glance, displaying packages for all languages might seem like the obvious choice. But if your organization only supports a handful of different languages, you can avoid unnecessary clutter within Shavlik Patch by narrowing the list of languages here. The Catalogs tab shows which update catalogs are currently being used by the program. The Shavlik Catalog, which is the primary catalog, will always be active. You also have the option to import third-party update catalogs and to create your own custom catalogs. Refer to the online help system for information about activating and using additional update catalogs. One quick note before continuing. The Catalogs tab also lets you specify how Shavlik Patch will react if new metadata becomes available for updates that you have already published. We give you three different options, and because the metadata is only descriptive in nature and the update binary itself is never changed, the recommendation is to allow the update without prompting. With everything set, you are now ready to verify that your environment is set up properly to use Shavlik Patch, and we've provided a utility called Configuration Checker that allows you to do just that. Simply click the Launch Configuration Checker button, modify the pre-populated information if needed, and then click Start. As shown here, the utility will execute a number of tests to make sure you have the ability to connect to the required servers, that your account has the proper privileges and is a member of the required groups, and that your WSUS signing certificate is current and is contained in the proper stores. In this example, I passed all the tests but one, and I'll have to fix this group membership issue before using Shavlik Patch. Finally, the About tab simply shows copyright and version information about Shavlik Patch. There are no actions to perform on this tab, so I can just click Finish. Now that the configuration steps are complete, the Shavlik Patch list item that I selected earlier will now finish populating, and Shavlik Patch is ready to use. Please view the next video in this series for information on how you use Shavlik Patch to publish updates for your third-party and legacy products. For more information about Shavlik Patch, go to the web URL shown here. These two web pages contain additional video tutorials as well as a number of Shavlik Patch user guides. Thanks for watching.